So we will be having, this is our third session. Welcome to our session. So today we are having Anil Patel sir to take a session for us. We will start with the presentation of sir, followed by his discussion. Uh, so we can make it more interactive. So please do come up with some uh, comments, doubts, everything in between. Over to Ashta. Good afternoon to all. Today, uh, Mr. Anil Patel is uh, going to give us a session, and it's my pleasure to introduce him in front of all of you. Uh, Anil is the founder and executive director of Keras Worldwide, and Keras Worldwide is an organization uh, started in 2012 to support unpaid uh, family carers. That's a huge uh, family of people who uh, are never recognized in, in our world. They are never paid, ever paid even uh, an attention to also in, and in our today's healthcare and health industry, they are not even asked for their names or they are not even recognized. So, Keras Worldwide is an organization. Uh, they develop uh, and promote cost-effective and sustainable and easily uh, replicable methods for providing support and uh, support to carers in low and middle income countries. And they are working in India and uh, Nepal now. In, and in, from 2012, they have supported more than 7,000 uh, families uh, from India and Nepal. So, eagerly waiting to hear from you, sir. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Asla, for that kind introduction. Um, so, can everybody hear my voice? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Excellent. Excellent. I'm really looking forward to this session. And uh, thank you so much to Pallium India for uh, inviting me to share the experiences of working with the family caregivers and the challenges and what we have done, particularly experience of advocacy and the empowerment process. So please feel free to ask any questions uh, you may have in between. Of course, we have at the end, there is a discussion, but in between, if you need any clarification, uh, feel free to ask any questions. I know there are 15 participants have joined for today's session. I'm delighted to uh, be part of this uh, third session. So before I start sharing about our experiences and how we advocated to include the carers and how we taken them through the process of empowerment, it would be really helpful. Can just uh, raise the hands. How many of you are carers or had the experience of caring somebody? Okay, one. Great, great. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, Asla, please, could you change to the next slide? As uh, Asla has mentioned that uh, Carers Worldwide is the only organization trying to highlight the issues of uh, carers and uh, address them strategically, not just to raise the awareness and the needs of uh, unpaid family carers in low and middle income countries. There are so many organizations are there, hundreds and thousands of organizations doing incredible work for the cared for individual. Here, when I talk about the carers, it is the unpaid family members who have been caring for their loved one. Mother, father, husband, wife, children, or children caring for parents or siblings. That is what I mean. Next one, please. So quite often, lots of people ask me the question, what inspired you to think about this issue? Um, about the carers uh, uh, or caregivers in India, we call. Um, I would like to share with the participants that 
two experiences have inspired me to think about this issue deeply. Before I moved to UK, I worked in the field of mental health, particularly in rural areas. Whenever I used to meet with uh, many families um, of persons with mental health issues, they used to ask so many questions to me. Why this happened to us? What did we do? Is it a past karma or sin or somebody has done a witchcraft? So whatever knowledge, understanding or information I had, I was able to respond to that question adequately. But the second question, which had a huge impact on me, and I didn't do anything on that. The question was, this is the question from the caregivers or family members. The question was, what happens if I die tomorrow? Or something happens to me, who is going to look after my loved one? At that time, my focus entirely was person being cared for because he or she was suffering from uh, challenges, difficulties. There was a lot of stigma was there. Families were isolated. There was peer pressure, neighbors pressure, society pressure was there. So for me, carers look normal. They're getting on with their life. Why are you so worried about it? Let us work on the uh, person needing the care rather than the carers themselves. Then suddenly made me realize the vital role they play. We all of us as a professionals, how much time we give to the family members. If they are lucky, maybe half an hour, 45 minutes, an hour. During that time, we provide information, knowledge, skill transfer, all sorts of things. But end of the day, if we deeply analyze or reflect on it, it is the carers who are transforming the lives of cared for individuals. They are the ones spending time with 24-7 with the person needing the care. When the changes have occurred, I'm taking the credit. That has happened because the change happened because of me. Yes, maybe true, but significant portion of the changes is because of the carer. But we are not recognizing that. We are not acknowledging or appreciating the wonderful role they are playing day in, day out. So that was one of my first experiences. Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to uh, do anything whilst I was in India. Uh, only we were working with the person needing the care. Next slide, please. So with uh, participants, I would like to share some personal experiences. Uh, this is my family. Uh, Ruth and myself, we have two beautiful uh, uh, daughters, as you can see. When our second daughter was born, we discovered she has Down syndrome. Uh, it hit us so hard. The kind of questions what the carers were asking in India, same questions were going through our mind. Why us? What, what did we do? Of course, as you can see, she is beautiful, clever, funny. Maya, she is now uh, 12 years old. You can see with the red T-shirt. And it is privileged to have her. She is enriching our life. If there wasn't a support from friends and families, I don't think Ruth and I would have coped well. So these two experiences have led me to ask a simple question. Imagine a country like India, where millions and millions of carers are caring for their loved one without any recognition, without any support, without any acknowledgement. But the impact of caring, having on them is significant. Feeling of lonely, feeling of isolated, health impact, unable to participate in social cultural activities, not having enough time to look after themselves. So these things made me to think deeply than I've done a lot of study in India, as well as in South Africa. So I will share that uh, perhaps later. So these are the two experiences that have inspired me to think about the unpaid family carers who are invisible, as Aslava was sharing, 
and uh, they are hidden they are among us but we don't have the eyes to see them can we just try and put light on the carers as well um, so for me the person needing the care person who is providing the care are the two sides of the same coin they are intrinsically linked you cannot separate them next slide please So here is the definition we use. Uh, who are these unpaid family carers? So I want you to just take 30 seconds to read the slide. So in developing countries, they're not just invisible they're isolated and they're more vulnerable as well i just want to ask the participants uh, is it too fast or too slow or is it okay great thank you next slide please so here i'm going to show you a very short video which is around eight eight and a half minutes this uh, video we have done uh, in andhra pradesh particularly documenting the unpaid family carers their role and impact it is having on them and here there are four stories are there one particularly behavioral issues how it is having an impact on them child carers issue um anyway you can see that uh, video then perhaps we can have little yes, sir, sir can i start the video yes please సేవ చేసుకుంటున్నాను నా వికలాంగ నా భార్య నా భార్య సేవ నా పూర్త అనాథ అయిపోయింది నా భార్య బట్టలు పిండేయడము నీళ్ళు కాగబెట్టి నీళ్ళు పోయడము డేట్ అయినా కానీ పిండి వేసుకునడము మర కాగబెట్టడము ఊ పెట్టడము మళ్ళీ ఎప్పుకొచ్చుకున్నల్లా పెట్టుకున్నల్లా అన్నీ చేసుకున్నల్లా ఈ పరిస్థితి నాకు ఉండే ఒక కొడుకు ఉండే ఓ బిడ్డు ఉండే కొడుకులు అంత పాము కొరకు చచ్చిపోయా బిడ్డు మోహన్ ఇంటికి ఇచ్చినాను చాలా డే ఇక్లాంగ్ ఇంకా కూడా చచ్చిపోయినప్పటి నుంచి ఇంకా బాధలా ఇంకా కొన్ని కొన్నిష్ట అయిపోయింది నేను అట్లే తనలాడు తనలాడు కానీ నాకు పచ్చివాతం వచ్చిందే నా అంత కష్టం చేసుకుంటే బోలు లేకుండలేదు లేకపోతే నా పరిస్థితి బాగా లేకుండా చచ్చిపోతే నా బా నా బాధ చేసే దిక్కులే దివాణం లేదు ఇంకా నేను ఏదైతే పని పోతానో పని పోయినాడు నూర నూట యాభై వస్తుంది ఓ అర్ నూట పెట్టుకునేది ఏదో పెంచిన వస్తే దంట జరుపుకుంటాను సంగ్రాస గ్రూప్లో ఉన్నాను దంట అది ఎట్లు పెట్టుకున్నాను ఏదైనా పని పని పోతే ఎవరైనా ఇంటి పక్కన వాళ్ళు చెప్పిపోతాను వాళ్ళ పని ఉంటే నేను ఏదో వాళ్ళ సహాయం అవుతాను వాళ్ళు నాకు సహాయం అవుతారు సార్ నా భార్య నా సేవ అని చూసేదానికి బయట లేమో అని అనుకున్నా నాకు అభ్యంతరం ఏం లేదు నా భార్య నాకు ముక్కు నా భార్య బాగుంటే నాకు బాగుంది అట్లా
మా అమ్మని చూసుకున్నాలంటే కష్టమవుతుంది సార్ నాకు బాధ అనిపిస్తుంది సార్ మా నాన్న ఎక్కడంటే ఎక్కడ పోతాడు సార్ ఇంకా మేము పట్టుకొచ్చుకునేలా ఇంకా అది భూ తినిపోయేలా మాకు గడిపోయేలా సార్ ఆమె మేమే చేపిస్తాం సార్ అని మేమే చేపిస్తాం లేకపోతే ఇంకా ఎక్కడన్నా తుట్టు పోతాడు అలి కాసి మా అమ్మ పట్టుకొచ్చుకునేలా అన్న మేమే తినిపోయాలి అన్ని మేమే చేయాలి సార్ మా అమ్మకి బాధ అనిపిస్తుంది సార్ ఒక్కసారి రేటు పోస్తుంది సార్ నాకు ఎక్కడ పోయినా ఇంకా నేనే ఉండాలా గ్యాటి పోయినా ఒక జ్వరం వచ్చిందంటే నేనే పోవాలి ఎక్కడ తుట్టాను లేకపోతే కూలి కానీ ఎవరు పిలిస్తారు మాకు సార్ ఎవరు పిలిస్తారు మా అమ్మకు పించిన వచ్చినప్పుడు మేము ఉప్పు కారం అని తెచ్చుకుంటాం బజార్కి అక్కడ వెళ్ళి తెచ్చుకొని అట్లా సరదిప్పుతాము ఆ ముక్కు ఇంకా ఇంకా ముయ్య ఇరుపాలే వచ్చేది ఎంత వచ్చి రావు ఇంకా ఎక్కడ పోయినా ఇంకా ఆ పించిన డబ్బులతోనే చూసుకున్నాలా వాటికి పోయినా తనతోనే సంసారం దబ్బుకున్నాలి సార్ కానీ మా మా ఫ్రెండ్స్ వాళ్ళందరూ బడికి పోతుంటే నేను పోలేను కదా సార్ ఇంకా నేను మా అమ్మని చూసుకుంటూ ఉంటాను నాకు ఇంకా అప్పుడు బాధ అనిపిస్తుంది సార్ మా అమ్మని చూసుకుంటాను సార్ నేను మా డాడీ నన్ను నాకు ఎక్కడ సంతోషం లేదు సార్ బాధ అనిపిస్తుంది సార్ నాకు ఇక్కడ పోను సార్ నా నీడే ఉంటాను సార్ మా అమ్మని చూసుకుంటే నాకు సాల్ సార్ మా అమ్మను మా అమ్మని మా డాడీని చూసుకుంటే సార్ నాకు సాల్ చీను పుట్టిన తర్వాత బాగలేకుండానే ఉన్నాడు మేము అక్కడెక్కడ చూపించినాం ఆయన కూడా బాగా కాదని చెప్పేసినారు నేను ఎక్కడ పోయేదానికి లేదు ఇంటి దగ్గర బాబుని చూసుకుంటూ ఉండాలి బాబుకు అవి ఇవి చేసుకుంటూనే ఉండాలి ఇంకా అన్నీ నేనే చూసుకుంటూ ఉండాలి ఇప్పుడు ఇంకా ఆమె మెత్తబడిపోయింది ఇంకా నేనే ఉండి చూసుకోవాలి నేను సేలులో పనికి పోతుంటాను కాకపోతే ఒక ఆదివారం వస్తేనే పాప ఇంటి కాడుంటే అది ఒక్క రోజే నేను పనికి పోతాను నేను ఎక్కడన్నా పోవాలంటే కూడా బాబు నెత్తుకొని పోతా మా వారు మూడు నెలలు డ్రైవర్ పనిగా పోతాడు మా ఆయన ఒకరు తేవాలి మేము ఇంతమంది తినాలి కూర్చొని సీను అదే ఇప్పుడు చిన్న పా చిన్నపిల్లోడే ఎత్తి దింపగలము పెద్దగా అయితే చాలా కష్టంగా ఉంటుంది కదా మాకు పిల్లోడు చాలా కష్టం ఎక్కి దింపాలంటే నాకు కూడా ఆరోగ్యం దొమ్మలు నచ్చేది తలకాయ నచ్చేది బాబుని చూసుకునే కూడా చాలా కష్టమే కాకపోతే ఇంకా తప్పదు చేసుకోవాలి కదా మాది దొదకొండ గ్రామం నా పేరు కాశింబి నాకు ఇద్దరు పిల్లలు ఒక అబ్బాయి ఒక అమ్మాయి ఉన్నారు అమ్మాయిని చదివించుకుంటున్నాం పిల్లోడు వికలాంగుడుగా పుట్టడం వల్ల వానికి ఏం చదివించుకోలేకపోతున్నాం కానీ అందరితో పిల్లలతో పాటు నాకు ఉండే ఒక అబ్బాయి బాగలేడని చాలా బాధగా ఉంది ఏమన్నా చేయాలంటే నాకు చాలా ఇబ్బంది ఉంది పిల్లోనికి ఏదో పిల్లలతో పాటు కొంచెం గవర్నమెంట్ స్కూల్లో ఉన్నా పోయేస్తే బాగుంటుంది మాకు అంటే పిల్లోనికి ఈడ్స్ వస్తే సార్ వాళ్ళు వద్దమ్మా మీ పిల్లని అక్కడ ఎక్కడ అనంతపురంలో ఎక్కడ వాళ్ళకి ప్రత్యేకంగా స్కూల్ ఉండాది మీ పిల్లలతో పాటు మా పిల్లలు చెడిపోతారని చెప్పి సార్ వద్దన్నారు కనీసం మా పిల్లని పేరెంట్ రాసుకోండి సార్ అంటే కానీ ఆయన రాసుకోలేదు ఎంత స్కూల్కి చదివించుకుంటే నేను నేను చదివించుకోలేకపోతున్నాను అనే ఇబ్బంది ఎక్కువ ఉంది ఇట్లా పిల్లలు పిల్లలు పెరగడం ఎక్కువ అవుతుంది కాబట్టి బాధ కలుగుతుంది మాకు చేయాలంటే మాకు ఇంకా ఎవరు లేదు ఇద్దరు మే కదా బాగా ఉండేది పిల్లని ఇంకా ఎక్కడైనా ఇచ్చినాక మా ఇద్దరు మా పిల్లని ఎప్పటికైనా కానీ మేమే చేసుకోవాలి ఎక్కడైనా బయటికి వెళ్ళినా ఇట్లా పిల్లని తీసుకొని ఎందుకు వచ్చినావు అనే వాళ్ళు కొంతమంది ఉన్నారు ఈ ఈ పిల్లోనికి పెట్టు చిన్నగా ఉన్నప్పుడు ఏమైనా చాకరీ చేస్తుంటే వాళ్ళని ఇంట్లో పెట్టుకునేందుకు చాకరీ చేస్తున్నారు కొన్ని ఏడవుతాన పారేసి వచ్చింటే అయిపోయిండే అన్న వాళ్ళు ఉన్నారు అట్లాంటి వల్ల చాలా బాధకరంగా ఇద్దరు పెళ్ళం మూడుగా ఇంట్లో కూర్చొని ఏడిసినాం మేము పిల్లోని ముందర పెట్టుకొని మనం ఏమన్నా పని చేసుకొని బతకాలా అన్న పొలాల పని ఎవరికి చేసి పెడతాము పనికి పోయి అంటారు ఇక్కడ ఊర్లోనా మేము ఎక్కడ పోయినా మా పిల్లోని వెంట తీసుకుని పెళ్లి అన్న కాడగా ఈ పిల్లోని తీసుకొని పెళ్లికి రావద్దు అన్న వాళ్ళు చాలా మంది ఉన్నారు ఇలాంటి పిల్లోని తీసుకొని పెళ్లికి ఎందుకు రావాలి ఇంటి కాడ ఉంటాయి పోయిన వాళ్ళు ఉన్నారు వాడు ఎవరున్నా నీళ్ళ కాడ ఒక కాడ నీళ్ళు తాగినా అబ్బో వాడు అది తిన్నాడు వాడు ముట్టుకున్నాడు నీళ్ళు గలీజ్ గలీజ్ అని తాగరు కొంతమంది వాడు ముట్టుకున్నాడు వాడు తిన్నాడు గలీజ్ చేసిన అటు నీళ్ళు అనే వాళ్ళు కొంతమంది ఉన్నారు
ఇక్కడ ఎక్కడన్నా విడిచిపెట్టి పోయినా నన్ను కొట్టే నిన్ను కొట్టే అనే గొడవలు ఎక్కువ జరుగుతుంటాయి పిల్లోని ద్వారా చాలా చాలా కొట్టినా పిల్లోని కొట్టుకునేది మరి తర్వాత ముందర పెట్టుకుని ఏడిచేది అలాంటివి చాలా జరిగినాయి ఎవరి దగ్గర వదిలేసి పో మా పిల్లోని మా దగ్గరే విడిచిపోయినా ఏం జరిగిందో ఏం జరిగిందో అనే టెన్షన్తో మాకు ఎక్కడపోయినా సమాధానం ఉండదు కాబట్టి విడిచిపోము పిల్లలు మాకు పుట్టినాడు కాబట్టి మేమే వేగాలు కానీ ఎవరికి అవసరం లేదు వాళ్ళతోన నా మొగనికి చూసుకోలేక ఆరోగ్యం బాగలేక నాకు అన్నం తినబుద్ది కాదు మెంటల్ నేస్తుంది నాకు అసలు ఆరోగ్యం మంచిది కాదు ఇతరుల సహాయం కొంత ఉన్నది కొంత లేదు మా ఆయనకు బాగలేదు బాగలేకపోయినా నా పిల్లలు చదువుకునే వయసులో పనికి వెళ్ళి తెచ్చి పెడుతుంటే చాలా బాధగా ఉంది సార్ నాకు మా నా పిల్లని సేకరు చేస్తుంటే మంచి చూస్తే బాధ కనపడుతుంది నా మనువుని గురించి నాకు చాలా బాధగా ఉంది నేను చచ్చిపోయినాక నా మనవుని నా కొడుకు చూస్తాడా చూడడా అని నాకు చాలా బాధగా ఉంది సార్ నందినికి నేను ఒక్కటే సంరక్షణిస్తున్నాను ఇంట్లో వాళ్ళు ఎవరు ఇవ్వటం లేదు thanks uh before i go on to the other slides are there any immediate uh comments from the participants would like to make or ask question here please feel free to do so you can raise your hands if you have any queries ajay you are the okay probably we can come back to later okay sir uh so that video has shown four kinds of uh, caring responsibility one child carer caring for both the parents and uh, husband caring for a wife and uh, child having a mental health issues as well as uh, uh, epilepsy and how the stigma and the behavior from the relatives and neighbors has impacted on them and other carers have made comments on that and there were some statistics were also there i will show you a little bit more later as well next slide please as you have seen from the short documentary film that there are so many issues carers are talking about but there are five key issues which are constantly keep coming up during our discussions one is carers are feeling that their health is being affected they are feeling lonely isolated we don't have the opportunity to meet with the relatives or social contacts and the fourth one is particularly they are talking about is because of caring responsibility although we have an opportunity to go to work we don't have the time we don't have the choice to go to work and among the young carers or child carers it's a loss of their education one side we talk about right to education other side there are so many children who are missing out of the school next slide please so sabina when i was having a meeting with her uh, she is from bangalore looking after child with autism very powerful statement she made we are voiceless the most marginalized and excluded in every aspect of life of course she is very proud and happy 
that service providers here is an ngo providing the services to her son uh, but because of caring responsibilities she is struggling to cope with her day-to-day -day life but nobody is asking simple question how are you do you need any help about herself next slide please So I want all of you to just reflect on this slide for 30 seconds, please. Country like India, we have more than 1.2 billion population. We have the statistics about everybody. There are more than 10 million people suffering from, at any given point, mental health issues. 3.7 million people with dementia, more than 20 million people with a disability. Now, with 2016 Act, that number will go uh, more than double the number that has been listed on the slide. Uh, all of those categories, adults and children, all have the carers. But really, we don't know how many carers are there in uh, India. Whereas 20 so 2009 report, WHO report says by 2030, there is going to be 400% increase in the need for carers in developing countries only. What I'm trying to say is we are literally sitting on a bubble. We don't know when it is going to burst. Again, in India, another statistics, there are more than 100 million elderly carers are there. Uh, elderly people are there and 51% of them are living below poverty line. And 40% are needing a care because of age-related illnesses, advanced uh, health issues, but there is no support system to the, not just to the elderly, but also to the carers. Just one more statistics, in the UK, there are more than 6 million carers are in the UK. One in eight adults are there. The contribution made by the carers in UK is uh, 134 billion sterling pound, which is almost like a running and equivalent to the second NHS, National Health Services, like a health budget. That much the carers are contributing to the UK economy. But it is about the lost opportunity, lost productivity, but nobody is thinking about that. So that is the magnanimity of the issues we are confronting. And uh, as I mentioned, because there are two more things I would like to share here. Of course, in the Asian society, last 20 years, the demography is changing faster than one could imagine. As you may have seen, we had a concept of joint family, extended family. Earlier, people used to live together and support each other within the family member. Somebody is to cook, somebody is to wash clothes, or go to the field, or do other work. But unfortunately, due to significant demographic changes, more and more families are nucleus family. It is the same individual who has to do everything, cooking, cleaning, caring. Because of that, having a significant impact. We all do the caring if it is a short period of care. Imagine if there is no respite, there is no short break, they have to continuously care 24-7, 365 days. There is no break for them. The impact is a colossal. Next slide, please. And here is the uh, study we have done. I would like to uh, share just three key statistics I want to share. Just look at the discrepancies. 84% of caring is done by women. Why? why that is the case and the second one is look at the health issues 83 percent of carers have shown the physical health problems physical health concerns and 86 percent experiencing the mental health concerns one side they are caring for the person who has been already diagnosed with mental health issues but other side the carers who themselves are suffering but there is no support system to them and 92% of carers are worrying about their money. And the final one, look at the carer's age. Actually, the productive age group, 
56 percent, 26 to 45, and 46 to 65. If you combine those two, 90 percent of carers are caring at a very productive age group. Next slide, please. So that is the background. With that background, I came up with a vision that needs of every carers are routinely met in order to achieve not just physical, emotional, economic, but also social well-being for each individual wherever they are. Next, please. Our mission is to enable carers, service providers, policy makers, and other stakeholders. There are three key words are there here. One is recognize the wonderful role, vital role carers are uh, playing. Responding to their own needs are equally important. And the third one is how do you create that equal value between the care for individual and also the carers? They became a carer because there is a need for care. So that is why I was earlier saying that these two individuals are intrinsically linked. So we look at whole family as a unit. It's not just these two individuals. How do you create that nurturing environment within the family so that each and everybody able to understand and able to provide the support to the carer who need that support? Next one, please. So how do we operationalize our mission? How we act as a catalyst to bring about the systemic changes because always our work will be like a drop in a ocean. We may not be able to reach all the carers, but can we use our experiences and learning to share with the policymakers, influence their thinking and bring about the systemic changes in the countries where we are working, India, which I will share a little bit about it, what we have done, what we have achieved, and what is it we do for the carers themselves. Next, please. So I mentioned we work through the partner organization. One is we not only raise the awareness about the issues faced by the carers and inspire them and influence their policies and thinking, and then the design and develop a program which is appropriate to their organization and the geographical location, the culture where uh, they are operating. And then we provide the systematic advocacy and empowerment training module for the staff of the partner organization. As I mentioned, one another element we do is we build the uh, evidences by collecting the information like you have seen about the baseline survey. And then we use that as also a measuring tool. We go back after the intervention, whether things have improved or not improved, if not, why not? And how we could further uh, strengthen our own program of work. At a broader level, using these evidences, we'll be engaging various stakeholders, policy makers, to draw the attentions of the caregivers and their issues, how it is affecting their own health and well-being. Next, please. So this is the model. I have come up with one is there are this model is a positive changes which brings not only improving the health and well-being of carers but improve the quality of care as well there are five elements are there in this one is i realized that to reduce the loneliness and isolation how do we connect people in a similar situation so we promoted emotional support groups and then the second element is a significant impact on their health. How do we provide that support? We came up with a concept called individual care plan to address their health and economic issues. What we do is once they are onto the programs, we do thorough health assessment of each individual carers, whether they have the physical health issues, mental health issues, or counseling issues, family issues, relationship issues. Then we organize to recharge their own batteries sometime, respite and a short break so that they can attend to their own 
social cultural activities, whether wedding or funeral, or want to go to temples, mosques, or uh, churches, they are welcome to do. Then the third element we do is, how do we augment the family income? What is it they were doing before they became a carer? And finally, we have created a platform where they can raise their voices and hold the legitimate government to account to provide the services, which I will talk briefly about it. Asla, how are we doing with the time? Thirty-four minutes. Twenty minutes more, sir. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Now, uh, next slide, please. So, I'm, I will just quickly whiz through the uh, model which we have. We have promoted nearly 500 uh, such groups every month they are operating. So, there are 22,000 members. They meet regularly. This has enabled to share the experiences of each carers in a different context, different culture, different geographical locations, and created that support network. However poor people are there, they all have the mobile phone. So if I'm having a problem, I'm connecting to somebody. Did you have this kind of issues or where did you go? What kind of information you will be able to share? So every month, twice a month, they provide, they come together one hour and that is the time for themselves. And that has a significant reduced their loneliness, isolation and feeling of I'm not alone. There are so many people in a similar situation. Uh, next slide, please. Earlier, I was talking about the health services. Uh, we have uh, trained and oriented more than 150 primary health center doctors. Whenever the family members take the patient to the clinic, generally, Quite often, the history is collected about the patient. But what we have advocated is, please continue to do that. Along with that, include two more questions in, into your uh, history collections. One is about the carers. Just ask simple question, how are you? Do you have any problems? Do you have any issues? So that has opened really the conversation between the professionals and the carers. and the doctors at primary health center have recognized carers are partners in care they are the third element in that there is a patient there is a professional and third one is the carers so it is a triangle of care we have trained six uh, specialist counselors are there and some of the carers we have taken them through this barefoot counseling now we have more than 320 barefoot counselors at villages, they are the first point of contact. If any carers are having any challenges and issues, they'll be able to talk to the counselors. <coughs> Next slide, please. <coughs> so this is the simple activity we've done um, to recharge carers' own uh, uh, batteries uh, just to uh, giving them an opportunity to have fun or want to do something. So on the left hand side of the slide, you can see uh, these are the community caring center we have established that enabling carers to go to work as well as have a break for themselves. So we don't provide the respite care for overnight services, but morning nine until five o'clock. So whether they want to go to market to buy the products or buy the uh, materials required for home or want to attend the, uh, any social cultural activities. So that's what we support to the carers. So up until now, there are nearly 3000 carers have accessed this respite and a short break. Next slide, please. So in terms of uh, 
education, training, and employment. One of the things, uh, as I mentioned in my slide, that 92% of carers are worried about their money. So how do we augment the family income? We have developed a simple tool. We looked at what are the skills they have already? What experiences they have? What, uh, uh, what is it they want to do? They want to go back to the previous work, what they were doing before they became a carer, or do they have an idea they want to pursue but need a training? Then we facilitate that. So today we are supporting more than 8,500 carers engaged in productive work, earning between 150 to 200 rupees um, every day. Earlier, they were unable to go to work, as you have seen from the video, as well as from the statistics. Another, you know, we are working with more than uh, 380 young carers, child carers. Because of caring responsibility, they have dropped out of school, unable to continue their education. And I'm very happy to say, after working with three years and this community caring centers, all the 387 children are back in school full time now. Next slide, please. Finally, this uh, advocacy, uh, final element of our model is, as you can see that uh, we have trained more than 1,500 staff and the carers to, in terms of advocacy and the skills they needed to, to communicate and effective networking, uh, to how to highlight their issues with the officials, concerned officials. We have promoted eight carers association and cooperatives together. We have the day for everybody, but unfortunately there is nothing for carers. Even I'm talking about globally. So we have the day for uh, mothers, fathers, and uh, uh, even uh, uh, Valentine's Day we celebrate, Women's Day we celebrate, and uh, everything, but nothing for the carers. So last four years, we have been uh, organizing this Carers Day uh, in the different countries to highlight the issues and raise the awareness in the countries where we are working. Next slide, please. So I would like to share about our impact. Since 2012, we are working in three countries now, India, Nepal, and uh, Bangladesh. Um, Arsala, we needed to update our website uh, where we have quoted that statistics. Uh, so we, you can see that we have reached 60,000 carers and their family members uh, improved their life uh, in three countries. I don't know whether the below statistics is clear. In 2017, we done the external evaluation of our work uh, in India itself uh, after working with nearly four, four years. So before we started, we done the baseline survey. As you can see that I have used five statistics. Family living below poverty line were 97% before our intervention started. So after four years, that number has come down to 22%. Only 30% of carers had a regular income. Through our intervention, the model which I explained, now 84% are having a regular income. And 61% of carers were having a mental health and depression, anxiety issues, and that number has come down to 9%. 55% had physical health issues, and that has come down to 16%. So what I'm trying to say is, just a little bit of support can make a significant transformation in the carer's life. Um, next slide, please. And, uh, we were quite instrumental in terms of bringing the policy changes, which again, I will be talking to you about how we were managed to bring the systemic changes on 28th of December, uh, September. Uh, so I'm not going to dwell too much on uh, here because the process I will be explaining uh, later. 
So Carers Worldwide, although very young organization set up six years ago, we were very instrumental in bringing the carers issue. And I'm delighted to share both People with Disability Act and Mental Health Act bill now recognizes three key words, support to caregivers. So we are using that. How, what are the recommendations and guidelines we can come up with to support the caregivers? Next slide, please. So to all the participants, I would like to share our intervention is like a drop of ink in a bucket full of water. You don't need a whole bottle of ink to change the color. So just a little bit of support would transform. It has not only improved their health and well-being, but improved the quality of care. Now our partner organizations are saying working with carers has become a mandatory. We don't need, uh, we never thought before including carers. Earlier, we thought carers are the barriers. So next slide, please. Just I would like to give one young carer caring for her father. This is the story about Gauri and Srinivas' son. When Gauri was 10 years old, her dad met with an accident. He had a spinal cord injury. Uh, next slide, please. So within six months, wife realized that there is no life with him. So wife asked Gauri, her daughter, so we leave Srinivasan with his family. So we'll find our own uh, way. So mother left and overnight Gauri became a carer, cleaner and a cook. So as you can imagine, she was in a school full time and dropped out of school, not having any friends or families or contact. And family became a destitute and Gauri had to abandon her school. Because of caring responsibility and she became so ill, there were nobody in the family to provide her a guidance and care. She was also going through a lot of changes. She was growing as well. There were a lot of physical changes, hormonal changes, but there is no woman in the family to guide her through. So next slide, please. Now, thanks to our work with our partner organization. So when I visited their families, Srinivasan was saying earlier, Anil, Gauri used to look after me so well for the first two years. Now she shouts at me, she gets angry, she throws utensils and runs away. Because even the partner organization who were visiting their houses always focused on Srinivasan. They were visiting the family, hello Srinivasan, hello Gauri, how is Srinivasan? As if Gauri became a piece of furniture in the family. She is also a human being. They could have asked, how are you? Do you need any help? How are you coping about it? So just to cut the long story short, we put together a package of support to the Gauri. And now she is back in full-time school and she's uh, doing uh, her degree now, back in school. And we provided the support to the Srinivasan. Earlier, he had a wheelchair. Now, through the government school, he has a moped. And through these different uh, mobile recharge companies, he has old handsets, mobile handset, and by selling those recharge cards, he is earning 150 to 200 rupees per day. So now Gauri is saying that life is still hard, but we are better able to cope with and look for the future. Next slide, please. So there are so many young carers are there. This is another story uh, from Nepal, and she has been caring for her husband as well as uh, uh, daughter has uh, severe uh, uh, mental health issues and uh, epilepsy as well. So there are so many such stories are there. Next slide, please. So one of the realization I had during this uh, uh, journey 
I would like to share is all of us, all of us on this planet, one or the other day, we all will become either carer or somebody will be caring for us during our lifetime. If that is the case, why isn't it uh, issue of carers is part of the development agenda? Nobody is talking about it. So it doesn't discriminate whether you are rich or poor. It doesn't discriminate whether you are an actor or an astronaut. It doesn't discriminate whether you are a scientist or a singer. Each one of us will go through emotionally same kind of challenges. So I had an opportunity to meet with the former president and also one of the famous Bollywood actor, Mr. Bachchan. We have done a half an hour show with him, uh, particularly about the carers issue. Then he was saying that I hadn't realized, Anil, until you talked about the issue of carers. Um, so one another way is if more and more people started talking about it, then there is a increased awareness, increased visibility of, because of lack of time, uh, unfortunately, I'm very happy to talk to you about the stories of um, Dr. Pranav Mukherjee, also Mr. Bhattan, maybe later. Uh, next slide, please. Probably go to the next slide, please. Finally, I would like to conclude. Uh, last six years, these are the four learnings for me particularly. So to healthcare systems, carers are the unpaid army keeping everything going. Just imagine if carers are not there, our health system will collapse, but nobody is thinking about that. To service providers, they are the potential catalyst to therapy success. Whether it is the NGOs providing the services, whether it is hospitals providing the services, or physios and all. So carers are the catalyst for the therapy success. And to doctors, they are the expert by experience, turning treatment plans into reality. They may not have gone to university, they may not have the degrees, but they know how to take care of their loved one. So can we recognize that? And finally, to patients, they are the indispensable brothers, mothers, husbands, grandmothers, friends, neighbors that make each day possible. Thank you. Last slide, please. So there are so many uh, information is there, uh, social media, and our website uh, information is there. Uh, please feel free to go into our website. Also, you can reach out to, directly to us if you need any further information or clarification. So now I'm very happy to take any questions you have. Thank you so much. I'm Radhi Suja. I work for Indian Cancer Society, in Delhi. And you know, I work with the cancer patients. Now, in Indian Cancer Society, we are very, very, we find that the caregivers are the most important people who are looking after the patient. And we have separate sessions for them. We tell them how to detox themselves, how to not get a burnout. And we are all the time supporting them. As we are helping the patient, we are also helping the caregiver. Now, I have one more question uh, for Mr. Raju. It is, you see, these patients who are either terminal or who are either on a palliative care or critical illness, they become violent also. Do we have any way to see that uh, you know, to prevent them from becoming violent. Violence is one thing, you know, because when they get frustrated, they cannot get their way. Then they become violent. How do we prevent that? I hope you can hear me. Hello. Yes, yes, yes. yes. yes I can hear you. Thank you so much yeah. for uh, asking that question and the support you are giving to the caregivers. That is so important. It is about recognizing the vital role they're playing and uh, 
so i'm afraid i i'm not the right person to answer your second question probably the professionals are here uh, on the uh, uh, system they can able to or the pallium india if they have the expert uh, how you can control the violence how can you can manage that so i'm not the right person to answer that question okay thank you so much but i think there should be something done for them okay sure any questions samira ma'am you can ask yeah a yeah, question to you mr patel in one of your slide you mentioned about uh, uh, education and training of these caregivers right yeah. so can you tell us little more about it how the training was organized what was the content what way you dissipated how you actually did it off all yeah. of this uh thank you so much uh, samira um that's a very good question we have this advocacy and empowerment model particularly for the uh, empowering caregivers we take them through very systematically it is a five modules we have and uh, each session will last five days so 25 days uh, uh, training these are the residential training in terms of building their own uh, capacity and uh, how like one of the uh, participant was asking in terms of how to look after their own health and well being so important it is that is another session we uh, cover and third one is about group facilitation skills how you can uh, uh, facilitate the groups and communication skills how you can uh, effectively uh, communicate your messages and finally how you can advocate with the uh, various networking agencies for example bringing the issues uh, of carers on that in terms of education at the moment we are enabling children young carers not to miss out that opportunity we are making alternative caring arrangement for them. like as i explained to you through community caring centers instead of young carers or child carers caring for them we are running at these community caring centers these centers are run by two adult carers they are caring for 10 to 12 children or adults so during the school hours there is somebody to care for them so children doesn't have to worry about when they are in the school when they are in the classes so that is what we are doing does that answer your question thank you thank you samira thank you sir uh, so any other have yes shanga sir i just i want to know whether time banking is being advocated in india so many countries are having a scheme of time banking that is a carer can give a service now and we draw the time later that is available in us uk japan and other countries are you are you are you advising this also in india sorry sir i didn't un understood your question time time banking is a concept oh yes 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 uh, yes that is very much uh, evident here in uh, developed countries uh, at the moment we are not promoting a time bank as a concept but we are encouraging the neighbors to provide the support to the family members not clocking okay how much time this neighbor or friends has given to them but we are sensitizing them providing the primary caregivers little bit of relief would improve their health and well being and uh, we sensitizing within the family members other family members can step in and look after the person who need that support so that carers can have life of their own so we also use very uh, much about the technology connecting to the people uh, through whatsapp and the video uh, uh, 
and Facebook. But time bank as a concept, we are not promoting. Thank you, sir. Uh, do, you, do you want to? If, if the representation is made to the government of India, this ministry in the government of India, we should have an immediate approach. Sorry, sir. Say again. If we have to introduce the knowledge of the government of India, which ministry is handling this aspect? It is a woman and a, a child welfare department. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Is it there? Huh? Yes, you can speak. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Actually, I, I am a carer and I am very much interested in uh, getting trained. Uh, of counseling the carers actually so i try to get enrolled in distance education programs which are like uh, in general counseling not in palliative counseling or uh, something related to health issues and all so can i get any assistance in getting enrolled in such uh, programs sir is there anything like that online or uh, distance mode or something because uh, i see many people getting distressed yeah. um, in carers you know you are absolutely right uh, uh, thanks for raising that questions at the moment we use the national institute of mental health and neuroscience which is based in bangalore which is well respected highly recognized uh, uh, premier institute uh, and they were the one providing the counseling, not just the services, but also training. But I don't know about the long distance uh, training, but I can explore with them. And probably I will provide the information to Pallium India yes. so they can uh, get in touch with me. Yes, sir. I'll be waiting for that because, you know, sure, I not sure, sure. Thing like that so i got enrolled in many many distance modes in counseling i did my msc psychology also for this reason only and and i'm at present doing my guidance and counseling also but i want to specialize you know because i see the need okay Take care okay of. no absolutely absolutely that is one of the reason uh, we also promoted encourage carers to enroll themselves. There are more than 300 such carers have become a barefoot counselors. They are the first point, at least they are able to identify this person requires a professional counseling services. So they are making a reference. Otherwise, earlier, everybody was having so many family issues, relationship issues. Uh, you were talking about distress, unable to uh, cope with the situation. So all those things. I totally agree. But Thank we'll, you very much. We'll provide you the information. Thank you. Sir. Okay. Uh, so, any more one wish to have any comment? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, I have uh, nursed my husband. He was a criminal uh, case of cancer. And it's a very funny sort of situation. You know, I went to the doctor with the, my, for his checkup and my husband tells the doctor, he says, I get very angry. So the doctor says, your wife is there, take out the anger on her. I turned back and then I told him, I said, on whom am I supposed to take out my frustration and anger? So one can, and, and you know, I have been dealing with such patients I've been counseling also because I have done my training from Nimhans only, from Bangalore a long time back, and I'm a counselor. So I have been with the patient for such a long time. But when the situation comes in front of you, it is very, very difficult. It is your own thing, and how you have to control yourself, it's very difficult. So sure. I think every carer, he may be as experienced as he can be, but he also needs the support. So that's, I think, very, very important for everybody. Thank you.
And that's all I have to say. Thank you for making a very eloquent uh, uh, case for support to the caregivers. I cannot uh, uh, empathize and uh, echo your sentiments. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. So, anyone else wish to have any comments? Uh, Ajay, you wish to speak something? Yes. You can speak now. I think your headphones are. We can't hear you. Can you remove that headphones and speak? Yeah. 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 Thank you. Uh, sir, I, thank you so much for uh, video. Uh, sir, can you can you hear me? Yes, uh, a little more louder, if you could. Okay. Yes, uh, sir. Thank you so much for sharing that video. Can you hear? Yes, we can. Actually, it's your voice. Needs to be a little louder. Uh, yes, we can hear you. Yes. Actually, sir, go ahead, so Ajay, for sharing that video. Thank you so much for that video, sir. Actually. Uh, I was, uh, I was most of the time I was thinking about my mom when I saw that red colored sari. Uh, actually, uh, sir, uh, she is, uh, she has become a back pain. Uh, most of the time, she is having back pain uh, just because of this uh, looking after this. So, uh, sir, I want to ask you: Is there any support that in this place uh, uh, which is available? Because uh, this is a certain kind of situation that. She's not, uh, she can, uh, even she can uh, give her responsibility to anyone else here. There is uh, other facilities available, but she's not ready uh, to, uh, uh, for someone else to care for me. Uh, and also she wants to do everything and also, but her health is also not uh, helpful for that. So, so there is such a condition that it has become, there is just like we can't find any solution for that. So, can you please help something? Thank you, Ajay. Uh, first of all, first of all, let me congratulate you for recognizing the role played by your mother. Uh, so, here it is a chicken and egg situation, Ajay. One side, your mom wants to do everything by herself because you are her son. It is the human and parental uh, instinct. We want to do everything. Other side, you are able to notice that it is having a significant impact on her. And also, we are living in a society. Your mom may be thinking that if I bring somebody else, what will the neighbors think about it? That kind of guilt feeling we carry on. We as a parents, in spite of having all these challenges and difficulties, maybe if your mom is able to join one of the support groups, I know, are you from Kerala? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. In fact, we work with uh, uh, spinal cord injury, uh, persons with spinal cord injuries in Popal uh, uh, in Karnataka state. There are around 17 of them. We have promoted their own groups. And uh, perhaps if your mom wants to have a conversation with the organization with whom we are working, I will be very happy to supply the uh, information, contact details, and how she can, in her daily routine, incorporate just 10 minutes for her own health and well-being. That would really transform. Thank you, sir. Yes, kind of uh, yes, challenges she is going through. Just to even uh, somebody to listen to the problems she is having. Maybe she may be thinking about not having the sleep in the night, 
constantly thinking about you and all. But good, at least you are able to recognize that. Um, so perhaps we can have chat later. Uh, even Pallium India has our contact details. If you want to, you can call me on WhatsApp. Very happy to talk to you further. Okay, sir. Sure, sir. Thanks, Ajay. Thank you. Thank you, Ajay. So, anyone more wishes to say any comment? Select off. Select that. Press Control A. Chandrasekhar, yeah. sir. Sir, your mic isn't, uh, we can't hear you, sir. No, I think it's all right. Can you hear me now? Yes, sir, you can speak. Yeah, so, um, uh, well, I, I appreciated what, the, uh, what, what they are uh, trying to build, what they have brought already, in fact. And uh, if you, um, in my, with my, uh, uh, our emphasis, if you recall my emphasis also, it, it boils down between what Ajay asked and what is to bring that gap between the, with such organization which are giving, uh, you know, holistic uh, palliative care and uh, looking at uh, home care at home by, by, by not necessarily the, the carers. And I can resonate with what he has uh, um, brought out, especially because having seen through my father, mother and father both, I can appreciate what he's saying. And it does affect, take a effect, but uh, the way I, I told you, the way I look at it is to see how we could make uh, palliative care a more uh, um, holistic uh, approach where we can actually reach out and give day-to-day -day palliative care as well. Uh, that, that is what, uh, uh, that probably you can throw light on how we, how we could, how could make it, how we could make it sustainable and uh, how we can achieve it. I mean, it's. It's a difficult uh, question, actually. Yes, uh, Chandrasekhar, you raise a very important point there. And uh, it is, uh, uh, one is about sensitizing, raising awareness about uh, this issue uh, among the uh, common people, because they think that palliative care is needed for only for, uh, but everybody will need at one point or the other time, but nobody is recognizing that. Sensitive. Second one is building the evidence and uh, having the constructive discussion and dialogue with the policy makers. To some extent, uh, now, Pallium India has done a fantastic work, particularly in Kerala, using that example to other states uh, as well. I, I remember having conversation with Dr. Rajgopal. Uh, uh, in the month of February, I was uh, in their institute. So now in Andhra Pradesh and also Northeast, they are working on that. So using some of those case studies and the engaging with the uh, policymakers, not just uh, policymakers, but also I would say uh, these corporates as well. So there is a multi-stakeholder approach is required, at, uh, not just one person or one institute or one center or one organization will. Uh, solve this one. We all need to come together to highlight this issue and uh, uh, come up with a policy recommendation. And of course, we can criticize about the quality of care and uh, various other things. But at least if there is something on the paper, we can hold them accountable. And also, we as an individual, what is it we can contribute to make it a success as well? Uh, I, I totally echo with you. Thank you. Shantanu, sir, you wish to speak something? Uh, no, I, I didn't say anything. Okay, sir. Thank you.
Chandrasekhar sir. Yes, sir. You can speak. Yeah, I have one important question, Mr. Uh, 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 Patil. Uh, the uh, while I, I understand that uh, it cannot be an individualistic effort, and it, there we have to have an ecosystem which is uh, you know uh, uh, harmophilic and helping each other out. I I I very much take that. Uh, but I wanted to ask you, like, um, uh, how how uh, feasible do you think it is to have a have an organization or a system here, which is bootstrapped and still can do this job without taking you know a big corporate uh, you know uh, CSR effort or you know uh, help from uh, external agency? My interest would be to see that. Uh, uh, an organization which is self-sustaining to to be able to eventually come out. I mean, maybe initially it may not be possible, but uh, uh, eventually it should be self-sustaining. And how do you think? What are your views on it? Maybe, as you rightly said, one of the ideas was that you know having employment schemes, schemes for caregivers itself, but they, it, that cannot be generating revenue. Uh, so th that that cannot be a revenue model. It is an assistance model. But uh, eventually, this game, if it has to be won, then it has to be uh, an organization which can be self-sustaining at the end of the day, while empathetically looking at the problem and solving it as well. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Chandrasekhar. You have uh, raised a very challenging question. Here are two thoughts. Um, I'm not saying that uh, um, there may be other uh, thoughts as well. One in India, as part of the National Development Council, uh, skill, uh, National Skill Development Council, do you know this will come to you as a surprising? Uh, they have identified there are 26 uh, skills, but not the caregiving as a skill. We could directly go and influence them, include the caregiving as a skill. Then you will be generating uh, millions and millions of people will be employed through that. That is one. Second one is, particularly in rural areas, we have the act called Manrega Act, National Rural Employment Guarantee Act, which was brought by uh, previous uh, uh, Congress government. In that act, there is a provision, like most of the time what we see is people doing the hard jobs, labor work on the field. But there is a provision in the act that if, People who are doing the hard job, digging the uh, land, pond, or planting a tree, or the, all those things, if they have a young children, somebody needs to care for them. So what we have been promoting or advocating is, why don't you set up a daycare center along with the carer, their own child or somebody, they can look after three or four children. So you can pay that whatever, they may not be able to go to the field, but the same money can be paid to the caregivers. So that is uh, also improves that employment. At least there is an assured income for 100 days, which gives you 18,000. At least you don't have to worry about the where the food is coming from. So food is taken care of. So those are the two concrete things. And third one I would like to share is in terms of the sustainability. Initially, we need this support. Just to give an example of our own uh, initiative, we work with particular organization maximum five to seven years. And within that, we will withdraw and it becomes sustainable. What we have, I have shared with this carers association, these are the registered independent organizations. Initially, we provided the support. Now, they are able to generate their own resources, accessing the government schemes, because so many schemes are applicable to carers, but nobody is thinking in that way. We need to think a little bit laterally. It is a woman's issue. It is a health issue. It is a livelihood issue. They may not have used the word carer, but we can use those policies, which are already there, make use case for support to the caregiver. And that is what, uh, in fact, uh, last year, through this Manrega, 410 carers were employed and they were able to earn between 15,000 to 18,000 rupees in four states. And we ran six these daycare centers through Manrega. 
and through urban uh, rural livelihood programs nearly 80 carers were access the loan to support and start a business so there are different ways uh, we could do that i'm very happy to have the further one to one conversation and take you through this uh, process and also i will uh, extend the invitation to all of you on this platform if you would like to visit whichever state you are in currently we are working in karnataka andhra pradesh Orissa and Jharkhand. And we are planning to initiate our work in Tamil Nadu very soon, as well as in Delhi. Those are the two more uh, states we'll be working. So you have the details of us uh, on the slides. Last slide I have shown you. Also, Pallium India will be very happy to share our contact details. So please do get in touch individually. Very happy to have further conversation. Thank you, sir. Uh, so we will be sending the uh, presentation as well as the contact details of Anil Patel, sir. So everyone is free to contact him in future. So anyone need to speak, uh, wishes to speak something, a comment or a doubt? If no questions are there, just I want to say thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. And uh, I'm sure there will be other questions will come as you reflect, as you uh, keep thinking about and relating to your own life or your relative life, somebody who has been carrying them and how it has impacted them. So please feel free to come back anytime. As I said, I will be giving another talk on 28th of September. So there will be more information on particularly how we try to influence the policy of government. Uh, thank you, sir. Shantanu, sir, uh, you have raised his hands. Yeah, just would like to know, can you hear me? Yes, sir, we can. Yeah, just would like to know, is there any plan uh, for carers to work in West Bengal? I mean, just as, as you was telling that, not about West Bengal. So just would like to know, is there any future plan? Yes, certainly, Shantanu. Uh, in fact, we done the study in uh, uh, South Paragon 24 district. Uh, uh, so certainly, uh, and uh, just uh, we need some little bit of resources and uh, very happy to, but it shouldn't stop us. If you want to know more about how we are doing on the ground work, if you happen to be like Arkand is not that far off from uh, uh, Kolkata, and I can facilitate if you want to uh, spend a couple of days there, how we are working, then you can hit the ground and run it. Yeah, so, uh, I would like to be interested with this thing. You know. Sure, sure. Please do get in touch. Very happy to connect with our partner organization there. Yeah. Um, so my final comment I would like to share is it's not the intention of carers worldwide to be there everywhere. I want to inspire others to join this movement, like carers movement, how we had the disability movement, how we had the palliative care movement, how we had the women's movement. Similarly, I welcome and invite each one of you on this platform to join this carers movement so that the people who are at the policy level, who are providing the care, or who are receiving the care, we all need to recognize and respond to the support to the carers. So um, feel free to uh, reach out to us and we would be very happy to do that. Yes, the short answer is yes, we have a plan, but <laughs> uh, certainly uh, we can't be there everywhere. We are also a very small organization uh, limited capacities we have but if you are interested we would be very happy to share our experiences and learnings and you can spend the time with our partner organization we can facilitate that and you can hit the ground and running uh, thank you sir uh, jagriti ma'am you wish to speak something jagriti ma'am
So if there are any more, no more questions. Thank you so much, Anil sir. Those uh, statistics were really shocking for me. And uh, I'm sure that all uh, of the participants will have many questions after reflecting over what you have told. And end of uh, uh, this session and in this program, I think we will have many people working on advocacy for carers also because we have already seen that uh, people are interested in this issue and you, we will have uh, two more sessions from you and we will have the privilege of uh, hearing you again for this and then I'm sure that they will have many questions during that time also. We will be sharing the uh, PPT and your contact details also so you can be in touch with anyone who has any question. Thank you so much for all those insights. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So that was definitely a very good insight on how to uh, give importance to caregivers. Uh, so we will see you soon with another session, sir. So thank you all for joining with us today. So uh, I have given the feedback form in the uh, group chat. So please do log in and give your feedback. It's very important for us. So we will see you on next Saturday with the topic on power mapping taken by Smriti, Smriti Ran. So if you have any queries in between, do write to us or call us on our phone. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.